Good morning and welcome to Cadaver's weekly webinar. This is Patrick at Cadaver and uh, today I'm just thrilled to have our first webinar of 2020. You know, last year we did 27 webinars. We try to do new topics. In fact, most of those 27 last year were new topics, but today I'm really happy to start off the new year with a webinar from two of our star developers, Jimmy Risch and Hilary Stupa. And um, today we have a bunch of techniques for you to, we're going to be showing you how to do a few things that with flow that are new, actually one thing that's new and one thing that is, uh, is a clever technique that is important. The Hillary is going to start us off with those. And then after that, we will uh, talk about forms and 365. So if you've got 365, if you've got info path forms or form libraries, even if you don't, there's one technique here that you can use to customize your ribbons that does not require forms. And we'll talk about that uh, along with a couple others that do are more form specific. Um, I would like to uh, just do a quick poll here just to check. Obviously, I want to make sure I have audio too, but I'm assuming I have that. So the first poll is just a quick question to see if you've got SharePoint Online or not. And I'm guessing that most of you, some of you may not. Um, Hillary, can you hear me okay? Are we, are we, uh, we've got live audio, yep. right? Okay, You're great. Fine. Absolutely. And the poll results are coming in. I'm just going to let this run a couple more seconds here. It looks like it's almost, well, we got 57 yes and 43 no. So I'll close that poll out. So that's the first question. I guess for those of you that do not have 365, you can set up flow and power apps and things like that with a hybrid scenario, like a gateway. Um, but you really need someone on 365 to be able to make use of the techniques today. So just FYI up front, don't want to waste your time. It's great to have you all here today. But if you're moving to 365, this stuff is very relevant. Um, but if you're not there yet, um, you know, it may not be as relevant. So Hillary, I'd like to switch to you. And, um, and thanks for doing this webinar today. You bet. So hi, everybody. A lot of you have met me before. Um, my name is Hilary Stupa. I've been working with Flow since I found it on the uh, Office Waffle menu. Um, and the first thing I want to tell you about is a new action that I was really excited to see the announcement for, simplified number formatting. I've got the blog post up here for you so you can uh, so you can see the announcement if you just search for, you know, Power Automate simplified number formatting. You should run across this post. It does have an embedded video that talks about the command. Just in case you haven't tried to put commas into a number to make it pretty to send an email or make it pretty to put in a Word document, here's the kind of workarounds people were using. Um, this works for numbers up to a million. Uh, and, and he uh, continues on mentioning, you know, what's a few dozen extra functions in a workaround expression for what JavaScript can accomplish with my float to fixed? And, and I mean, that's a pretty good question is why has this been why has making a number pretty been so hard? It has been. There's a new command for it, a new action for it. I'm going to show that to you. One thing to be aware of right now, this is January 23rd, this could change at any time, is that you do have to have a preview environment. So you'll need to create a preview environment to find this action if you want to test it out before it comes into general availability. And that's what I did here, was I created a, a preview so that I could um, give this a try. And when I first went and looked and didn't find the action available, I was like, hmm, so you can see why this is named format number, maybe. Now, Audrey's video and the documentation here at the Power Automate blog mentions that you are going to be able to use standard numeric formats. I found with some experimentation that that is almost true. Uh, the format specifier of decimal does not work. The format specifier H uh, I'm sorry, X for hexadecimal does not work. Um, the other format specifiers mentioned here under standard numeric format strings do work. And from what I could tell from a quick test with Excel format codes, those worked well too. So here's my test flow. It is super nice and we're going to do a quick test. We'll perform the trigger action. We're going to test. So we can just enter any number here 
and I'm going to put a bunch of decimal places on it. And let's say I want my format to be C, which is currency, uh, and two decimal places and hit run flow. Now this action has some standard formatting strings built in, but you can also pass in a formatting string. So you can see my output here is a nicely formatted decimal. No, you know, <laughs> no 50 line formula to get that formatted decimal back. Um, if we run another quick test, let's test it with an Excel uh, number format. You can include text with your number formats, too, when you're using these Excel formats, just like you can in Excel. So in this case, I'm going to use a negative number, and you can tell keyboard smash is my main, main way of input here. So here's my format. Now, if we look at the Excel format, you can see I'm using a, a semicolon to separate my positive format from my negative format. If I enter a negative number, it should come back prefaced with bad number and parentheses around it. So we're going to hit run flow and we will go ahead and hit done and we'll take another look at format number and you can see it was a negative number so I got back bad number in parentheses not that that's super useful but if you need to add some text to your number you can you can use the p format code for percents as I mentioned if you want you cannot use a custom format you can just select from the drop down and this also has the locale option so you can select a specific locale so at any rate be aware that should be coming to general availability soon and I'm sorry I'm probably already going over my allotted time <laughs> No, you're so, fine. Last... But, but, but let's, let's make sure let's, let's make sure people actually know why they would want to do this in Flow, because you know Flow oh. can be kind of behind the scenes, right? Yeah, I mentioned that at the beginning. So, so the reason we'd want to do this is to be able to send it, uh, to have it prettily formatted, for example, in an email, or have it prettily formatted in a Word document you're creating. So, yeah, the main reasons you you end up wanting to format a number is for all the reasons you ever want to format a number, right? You're spitting out an email and you don't want to send a number that looks like you know 20 decimal places out. You want it to look nice in your email. So, it is really for presentability. Cool. Does that make sense? Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. No, hey, it's early. And I'm talking fast because you gave me a deadline, you know, and so now I'm just like, oh, gotta go. Um, <laughs> so, next thing I want to talk about is um, selecting a single item from an array. If you haven't experimented much with the uh, expressions in Flow or Logic Apps, you may not be aware that there are some functions that work well with collections. And the type of scenario I'm looking at here is, for example, I've got this parent list of requests. It has a request ID. This is not its list ID. You can see its list ID over here. This is, this is an internal identifier. And I've got a child list that has been linked back to the parent list based on this internal identifier. So once again, in a, in a perfect world, uh, between SharePoint lists, parents and children, we would be using the, the actual list item ID, but we don't always get to dictate the data we see, right? So sometimes we run into, as developers, data that isn't to our liking, and now we need to work with it. So there's different actions for getting data from SharePoint. One is get item, where you pass in a list item ID, and that returns a single item. And the other is get items, where you can use, for example, a filter query. Um, you can even use a top count to restrict the items. So the type of scenario I've been seeing a lot lately is one where I've had to, someone has had to use get items to get back the data because they've got this, uh, this identifier that is not a list item ID, right? And then when they want a value from that data, and we're just gonna use a compose action, when they want a value from that data, Flow helps you out because it knows that get items is returning an array. So when I go and get the status from here, for example, right, it pops in and apply to each loop. Look, simple demo flow, this is no big deal. Big complicated flow, you know, having 15 different apply to each loops that you have to pop open when you're looking for something, that becomes a little problematic. So when you're dealing with actions that return an array, any action that returns an array, if you only want the first value, and especially in these scenarios where you know you're only going to get one value, like because you've specified top, for example, a top count of one, then you can use the first action and a little bit of JSON to get back what you, uh, what you really want. So we're gonna do another compose action here. 
can do compose. And in this one, we're gonna, I'm gonna scooch over a little here so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna use expression and under collection, don't forget your see more button, right? Under see more, we can do first. So now we're saying, please, may I have the first item that's returned? Now from this first item that's returned, if an item is returned, right? I would like the status. So here's the status. I'll show you in a second how to find out the internal names of your columns, because I think you guys know those can be tricky sometimes. So now we say, okay, now I don't need a for each loop any longer, and I'll just hit test, save and test. It's always exciting to watch somebody else's flow run. This is one of the reasons I love flow so much though, as opposed to like SharePoint Designer, being able to run it, watch it run, see the results, check for errors. So while that apply to each is running, you can see that we got back a status of new. If we look over here, there's our status, it's new. Um, if we look over here from our get item command, we can see what the data looks like that's returned and we could take a look and see that status is new. So if there is something that you just need a single value from, instead of having a bunch of apply to each loops, just use first, especially when you know it's only going to return one item. If you need to know what the name of the column is, I usually do control A, control C, and head over here to notepad, right, and just paste it in. So let's say I need a job title. Well, here's what I need then in that JSON. I need to put in job title. Okay, so hopefully these tips will help you out with uh, designing flows. And remember, format numbers only in preview right now. This is very cool. So a quick question. And if people have questions for Hillary, please do post them in the uh, chat window and we'll read them in a second. But my first question, Hillary, is this must be a, a boon for performance reasons as well, right? Because if the flow is running, I mean, are there any counters? I mean, are flows right? just unrestricted? You, I mean, you, well, no, you, you, well, no, I, you know, the apply to each isn't going to be hitting against the appy, um, your, the appy counts, your calls to, to like get items and stuff like that will hit against the appy counts. But we saw when this was running, how quickly my compose two ran and the time it took for my apply to each to run. Right. So, I mean, one second. I get it, yeah, it's yeah. just one second. Wow. But it, it's still, they add up, right? So my, my compose step ran almost instantly. Um, whereas inside the apply to each, there was we paid a time penalty for looping, as you would expect. And if we were going to like move this to logic apps to like say, say we had some kind of a premium data connector and we really wanted to reduce the, the extra cost that we have to spend. So we move it to Azure logic apps, right? With the webinar we did in August, then there'd be less, perf less computation, right? I mean, because they do the usage base there. So would that would that mean that exporting to Power Apps would, would give you a Power App, I'm sorry, exporting to Logic Apps would give you a, a Logic Apps flow that would be less costly? Well, this flow right here is using built-in connectors. So as long as I have an Office 365 account, it doesn't have any cost. Because I remember the Logic Apps, they, they compute the cost differently, right? It, it's based on actions, but I'm, I'm trying to remember that. I had another question from Brian. Um, actually, just comment. This is awesome, guys. I can always count on Kidavra. Way to go, Hillary. Hey, and Brian, if you if you have any questions, and anybody, if you have any questions, you think of them afterwards, just drop me an email. It's hillary.stupa at qdabra.com or hit our support alias up, and, and I'm more than happy to help you with this. But yeah, it's really nice to, to if you just need one little piece of data, only get that little piece of data, right? Thank you so much, Hillary. It's from wonderful, yeah. wonderful techniques. I'm going to quickly come back, and we have one more poll here. We're going to switch gears and, and talk about modern UI and ribbons. So I have a quick question for you um, off the top here, and that is, uh, have you migrated your InfoPath forms to Formsier? Formsier is our tool or app for allowing you to continue using those templates um, without having to use InfoPath, and we're, we're we're committed to getting the designer done as well. I know that's been a stickling point for us for us the last year or so, but we are working on it, and we hope to have it out for you soon this year. Um, so it looks like about a third of you are using Forms Your Way to Go, actually more than a third, 40%. Thanks for responding to the quick poll. Um, and we have one technique, like I said, that is um, is is it kind of unrelated to, to Forms. I believe, Jimmy, the ribbon customization technique can be used with Excel templates and Word templates and things like that. So, but first let's do a quick, we'll do a quick ad shout out before Jimmy's um, technique demos. Um, 
what, what's Form Zero? For those of you who don't know, I know there were about 50% of you who aren't using it, um, and about 13% said what's Form Zero. So for those of you who don't know what it is, it is our solution to move your for InfoPath forms forward. You don't have to worry about recreating all of your forms in Power Apps or moving them to some other technology. You can just keep using them in place. We have an app that replaces InfoPath, and that's the key thing. We have also added over the years lots of different features to this app. Through rules support is built in. You've got things like uh, the ability to add mobile CSS to make it look responsive. You've got other things that we, we integrate with the JSON-based web services. So there's quite a few things. We're using it, of course, for all of our forms internally, and it's, it's a quick way, easy way to upgrade your forms to, to remove that InfoPath dependency. And it is available in the SharePoint App Store. So without any further ado, Jimmy, I'm going to switch to you. And I think probably what we should do is just do a quick overview again of those three techniques and then and then dive into the first one. Does that make sense? Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Good to have you um, thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, as Patrick said, I'm going to be talking about um, some things relating to the modern SharePoint UIs and uh, the ribbon in particular. Um, the first is about integrating our Form Zero product into the modern views. Um, this uses a little add-on we've had for about a year. Um, and then the second one is about just adding your own um, custom buttons to basically any ribbon in any library or list, uh, which opens a URL. And we're going to show you a neat technique there for opening, um, actually, word templates. Jimmy, are, you, so, are you sharing the right screen? Oh, you're, you're sharing it in the, not in the, okay, you're in the uh, edit mode. Yeah, you got it. That's, that's cool. That's right. I just want to make sure. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, um, so forms your first. So let's let's have a look at what we're going to have at the end of this um, process. So I've got my finished library, and um, the interesting scenario here is a situation where you've got um, two forms in the same library. I know that's probably not all that common, and this tech, this add-on is also, of course, also applicable for the typical scenario with just one form in a library, but. You see what we've got here is this button on our ribbon, and when I click it, I've got two forms to pick from, and I could have as many as I want. But what I'm envisioning here for this library is a place where different sort of user access requests come in, um, like new users or permission changes. So a person can add whatever kind of request they want, and they all go into this library, and it's sort of treated as a, as a queue for all the different request types. And you're going to see how that works when we get to the end of this. So um, the thing that enables uh, this functionality is called Form Zero Extensions. It's a separate add-on from the Form Zero product. Um, it works in um, 365. I've had one customer can confirm that it works in SharePoint 2019 as well. I'm not sure about the earlier versions but um, definitely from 2019 onward, you can use it. And the place to get it is here in our InfoPath dev um, download site. You just go in here to Forms Your Installation and Setup, and it's right here, Forms Your Extensions. So that includes some documentation on how to upload it to your app catalog and install it to your site. I'm not going to go through that process since it's relatively simple, but um, there is a step after it's installed in your site to actually set up the config panel, and that, I think that's worth going through in a demo just to see how, how you do that. So I've just gone into my site pages, and I'm just going to do a new site page. And uh, one of the components included in the Forms Your Extensions is, a, is actually a web part, a modern web part. So I'll call this Forms Your Extensions Config. I'm going to add my web part. Just scroll down here, right there. I can also search for it, Forms Your Extension. And there it displays very nicely right there. If I click the pencil, it opens up a little um, parameters panel. and what what we can do here is just specify the forms URL so it's there by default anytime someone opens up the config panel. So I'm going to go over here to forms your 
to the uh, start page is the one we want. Just copy that whole URL and put it in here. I'm going to publish this page. And so now anytime you or one of your admins needs to use this add-on, you can just um, you can just come into the site pages like this. and uh, go into the page. That's not, what am I looking at here? Well, that's a little odd. You know it's live when you hit a speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, set, let's have a look at the one I set up earlier. And that one is working. Not sure what happened there with the other one, but we've got this one as a backup. Okay, so so once you've got this, um, you can use this panel to configure your libraries um, to uh, work with forms here in the modern views. So I've got um, a library created here called user requests. And I've got too many tabs open here. So I'm just gonna close down a couple. The library drop down shows me all the libraries in my site. So I'm gonna go user requests. Um, these check boxes uh, indicate which ones to sort of override to open in forms here. Unless you've got specific requirements, you typically wanna pick them all. And then I'm gonna put that forms here URL in here again. So let's just um, start off with uh, using one template. So if I go in here and look at my templates in forms here, got two templates. Let's start off with the new user request. So new user request. Okay. Apply changes. We've got a little log box down here to show what it's doing, but the change is successfully saved at uh, 1 a.m., 126. Okay, so I go in here to user requests. And what this gives us is we get the forms your icon here in the ribbon. And um, it also it's also overriding the name columns for the items so that they will these items will open in form zero when I click them. So when I just use a single uh, template, this button just opens that template directly. So I've got my new user request, um, put in a username. Um, it can my user, submit. And that form goes off to my library. And uh, in a moment, the titles will load. Takes a little extra time because we've got this add-on running. Um, but but there, um, there is the new document that we've submitted. So this is what you'll probably wanna do most of the time, just a single template in your library. Um, but let's look at the more interesting scenario. This was actually um, a requirement that we got from a user. They have separate sites for all their clients and for each client, they've just got a handful of different documents of varying types. So it doesn't make sense to have a separate library for each different type of document. So they just put everything in the same library and um, open them up accordingly. So, um, but in my, in my case, we, we've actually got some very similar templates that we're sort of grouping together so that people don't have to go to different places to find them. So we'll go back to the config and uh, all we need to do in order to use the multiple templates is to click this box here. This gives us a list of template names. So I'm gonna put the first one in there and um, permission change request is the other one. Where are we? Okay. Apply changes. It's important that you okay. have the name spelled right, right? 
Yes, the names have to match. And I'll come back here, refresh the page. And now we've got our little pop-up with the list of templates that I added. So I want to open up this one, permission change request. I'll make one for Kaylee Rye. She'll be a user. She'll, well, let's make her an admin and submit. And that goes off to the library. Okay, so we've seen uh, that button in action. We haven't actually seen uh, what happens when we try to open these up. So um, one little detail about how Forms Viewer works. When you submit a document to a library from Forms Viewer, it actually includes a little um, bit of stuff in the XML to indicate which template it came from. So uh, when I open up any uh, any one of these back in Forms Viewer, it's going to know which template to open it in. So I'm just going to click this one. I think the, re form. the real benefit here is that people can move their forms to to the modern UI and get this new functionality, the new rendering engine, the, um, the integration with Power BI and other things. I mean, that's really a key benefit, right, is taking those old forms, moving them forward. Even if you're just going to be viewing them, it's still, it's still a valid uh, scenario, right? Yep, I think so. That's awesome. Looks really easy. Um, yep, and uh, so I'm going to approve this. And that goes off to the library. Um, I've actually used a bit of um, promoted property magic to have a status column here. So I'm filtering this view to only show the pending items. So that one I approved is no longer uh, no longer visible here, but it's still in the library with an approved status. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, let's reject this new user request. Okay. And that one is gone from the library as well. So yeah, that these um, forms your extensions provides both of these functionalities, the ability to um, use this button here and the ability to open existing items in forms your and um, this slide deck includes a little bit of a rundown of what, what you need to do to get it working. Okay, so on to the next topic, which is um, adding custom links to the modern ribbon. So uh, we recently had a request from a customer who um, wanted to open um, one of they had they had an office template for one of their libraries, and um, for whatever reason, when they tried to open it normally, it didn't work quite the way they wanted. But they knew that if they just went to a particular URL, um, it would work. So they they wanted to add something to their ribbon to accomplish that. And SharePoint actually um, provides this functionality as long as you know um, what what sort of buttons to press. So um, it's possible to add um, your own links to the ribbon if you um, use this little bit of code we've provided, we've um, prepared. So let's have a look at how that works. So I'm going to go back into my site contents and um, we'll create a new document library. Call this proposals. webinar. Okay, so let's say um, similarly to um, our customer, we wanted to have a base template for, for the Word documents in this library. Uh, we can actually do that. Let's go here into the library settings, advanced settings, Edit template. Okay. 
Okay, enable editing. And I'm just going to put some boilerplate stuff here. So proposal. Outline. Okay, so here's our template. Just going to hit save there. Um, yep. Seems like somebody else it thinks that somebody else has edited it, oddly enough. Let's try that again. Okay, saved that time. Okay, so let's go back to our library and see what happens if we try to open a new Word document. So it actually opens a blank Word document, which is not what we want, but it is what I expected to happen. So the thing to look here is to go into the classic view and we go to files and click this little drop down here a new document and i expect that this is actually going to open it up in the template yeah it did okay so all we've got to do here is get it to open this url instead of the one that it's opening so i'm going to just set that url aside here and now we're going to use um, the script we've prepared in order to um, add a button to the ribbon. So where am I? I'm going to go back to my library. Proposals. Um, so we've got this script here, which we're going to provide as a um, in our little webinar goodies. I'm going to open this up in a text editor. Open my browser debug tools. This can be done any on any page within your SharePoint site. You can run this script. So I'm just going to copy all this. And you're using Paste Chrome. It. How do you you just it's like F12 or something like that? Or what's the, what's the key? Yeah, F12 is typically the key to open that up, and this will work in any modern browser, not in IE, but Chrome, Firefox should be fine. Uh, Edge as well. Okay, so I'm just going to run that. It says finish loading script. That's good. And now uh, we just want to open up this ribbon button parameters here and fill out, fill in the necessary values. So my SharePoint site URL is this. So that goes in here. My list name which is actually a library, but within SharePoint, the, everything is basically a list that when you get down to it. So list name is proposals-webinar. I'm going to give a name to this link. Um, what, this, what this accomplishes is that you can run this script again if you want to update any of the values and refer to that link by its, the name you gave it. So I'm going to call this open template link specify the text um, let's say create from template the link URL is going to be this uh, this big URL I set aside here and you can specify a URL for the icon to show next to the ribbon sure you've noticed the ribbon always has these little icons next to everything so we can specify an icon and what I'm actually going to do here is um, we can go here here and nab this this icon um, that's yeah docx let's just copy that address here we can use that here okay so I've prepared all my values 
um, ready to run this. So I just copy all that into the same place where I had um, run the, the original script. Paste that in, run it. It's done. Let's have a look. You want to go to the modern view? Do you think this is something they're going to fix later, or, or is it just something that would not be a default ever because of the specifics? I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing they have their reasons for having it work the way it does. Um, I I wouldn't imagine it changing, but but who knows? So so here is our, our new ribbon button that I just created. Um, and if we click this, we can see that as before, it opens up our template. And I can uh, go in here, rename it. Um, let's see, is there a rename? I'm sure there was a rename option here somewhere. Okay, we'll do save as. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, okay, got to save it first, I guess. Uh, my new proposal. Okay, back to the library. And there's my new document. So that's a, a nifty trick for adding new um, your own links to the ribbon. It's of course not limited to um, templates. It's basically any URL you want to you want to open. You can also um, use your own icons if you upload one to the site assets. You can refer to that in the icon URL, and um, and you're good to go. And let's just see what um, how we can update one of these things. So pull up the script again. I'm referring to it by the name I already gave it. So um, let's just give it some new text. That's done. Refresh. It seems like this would be a really clever technique um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to everyone should be knowing should learn how to use the console because of this customization technique alone right I guess I mean this is some just a script we put together in a couple of hours but um, yeah I, I often use the console for sort of running SharePoint um, APIs and things in a quick and dirty fashion when I want to uh, you know when it's not worth putting together a whole UI for it um, so there, here's my link. I just got the new text, create a new document. Um, let's say don't want it anymore. Um, we can remove it. Again, we're going to refer back to it by that name I gave it, open template link. Removed. Oh, it really takes a long time for that ribbon to come up. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's gone. It's not going to load now because I deleted it. Uh, so yeah, that's a handy little trick for adding uh, links. You can use it in libraries as well as lists. Uh, we're going to be providing the necessary scripts for it with this webinar. So go ahead and try that out if you want it. Yeah, we'll just do it. We'll send you a quick survey at four questions. Just get your feedback. We would like to know what you want us to webinar next. And we've got a couple of webinars scheduled for February. 
Um, Jim, if you could switch back to the slides real quick, we'll just wrap this up here. Um, and yeah. I just want to thank Jimmy and, and Hillary for doing such a wonderful uh, first kickoff webinar for the year. Um, lots of cool techniques here. Um, just to recap, Hillary showed you two techniques with flow, the formatting number, and the ability to uh, make your flows more performant and, and not have to do as much work by getting the first item in an array. Um, and then Jimmy showed two techniques for modifying your existing form libraries uh, to make them work in modern. Um, you can either modify them to open a form from Form Zero or, or mul multiple forms. And we have a little add-on app that you can install to do that. In addition, he showed a technique that was form independent, so it's sort of document type independent. Any, any kind of library that you might have, modern library, you can customize these ribbons now to do some custom open um, logic and custom open templates. So hopefully you found that one of those t topics to be interesting. Um, thanks, Brian, for the comments again. Uh, if there's anyone else's questions, uh, please let us know. Uh, we have gone a little bit over today. I want to thank you for your patience um, and uh, hope to have you back here in a couple of weeks. We're probably not going to do a webinar next week, but we probably will the week after. And um, thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to serving you in 2020. Thanks again, Jimmy. Thanks for staying up so late. Yeah. Sure thing. <laughs> okay. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody.